children, I am Auntie Mariana. My stories today are from Melo's Kingdom, written by Tuli Madoncella, with Wenzile Kuhlekile and Zedekiah Simanga. Today, we have some more of Queen Nzinga's peaceful advice. A bird's relative is the one with whom it shares a nest. In our Bible, in Proverbs 15 verse 7, it says, Words of wisdom make good sense. Mello and her friends couldn't wait for Queen Nzinga to arrive. She had been called to a country far outside the kingdom. Queen Nzinga was known for her wisdom and her skills to solve problems in a peaceful manner, and was regularly called away to help others. The door swung open, and Queen Nzinga stood there with her heavy bags. She was very tired after her long journey. Aza took her bags and put them down, while Bulu immediately poured water in the pot to make tea for her. Melo peeped out from behind Tambu's leg. It was past her bedtime, but she insisted on staying awake until Queen Zinga came home. Queen Zinga spotted Mello and gave her a delighted smile and a big hug. Queen Zinga could see that everybody was excited to hear about the great adventure she had been on. Tambu had been left in charge of the fort and immediately reported that there had been no incidents and that everybody was safe and in good spirits. Bulu came running along with a fresh cup of rooibos tea for Queen Zinga. Queen Zinga settled down and started to tell them about her amazing trip to her friend Anna, the ruler of a land with one of the largest lakes in the world. The lake was known for its delicious clear water and the beautiful landscape of the area. Anna told me how her land was changing. People had started to put pipes in the lake to drain the water and put it in bottles to sell it. She was worried that the water would be polluted by the pipes and factories and that it would no longer be clear and delicious. She was worried that the animals would not have water to drink. Some of the people selling the water were part of a tribe that lived in the area but no longer had enough money to survive. They sold the water to earn an income. Anna didn't know what to do about the problem. Queen Zinga sipped her tea and continued her story. I gave Anna the following advice. I suggested that the communities in the area limit the number of pipes put in the lake and share the pipes so that only a certain amount of the water is used. In this way, the water and surrounding area would be protected and not misused. The tribe living in the area could sell the water to people who came from far away to see the beautiful lake and land. This would ensure that there would be enough water and money for food for years to come. My friend Anna realized that things are changing, but it does not have to be a bad thing. She learned that there is a peaceful way to work together for everyone's good. The group was impressed with the peaceful answer Nzinga had found for Anna's problem. Then it was time for everyone to go to bed. Nzinga whispered to Tambu that the world was changing and they, the young ones, would have the responsibility to change it in a way that's fair and just for future generations. She smiled at Tambu and whispered softly, We never choose war, always peace. And... Here are our final quizzy questions from Queen Zinga. Do you know how valuable water is? And in what ways can you save water? 
Who can you go to for help when you don't know what to do? And why? Always try to settle a fight in a peaceful way. What do you do when you and your friend have a fight? And did you know that the African elephant is the largest mammal on land? The hippopotamus can run really fast reaching speeds of about 32 kilometers or 20 miles per hour. Hippos cannot swim. They only walk or run underwater. The gorilla is the largest primate on earth. And the eyes of a chameleon can turn in all directions. The tongue of the chameleon is about twice the length of the chameleon's body, so it can catch insects that are quite a distance away. And then there's the giraffe. They may be the tallest animals in the world, but giraffes sleep for the shortest length of time, only about 30 minutes every day. Hedgehogs can swim very well and even climb trees, despite their poor eyesight. Their great sense of smell and hearing help them get around. And the zebra, a zebra's stripes act like a fingerprint. Each individual zebra's pattern is unique. And did you know that lions have the loudest roar of all the big cats? A male lion's roar can be heard from up to 8 kilometers, which is 5 miles away, allowing them to communicate with each other over long distances. Now, something about Mello and her friends. Mello, the one who stands for good things. That's what the name Mello means. Through her adventures with Queen Zinga, the elephant, and all her friends, Kiboko, the hippo, Aza, the chameleon, Zenzo, the zebra, Ganga, the monkey, Bulu, the donkey, Tambu, the lion, and through all the wise lessons learned, Melo is growing into a perfect princess. She is learning to be brave and to stand for what is right honest and true. She will make a difference in the kingdom and she will be well loved by those who know her. In our Bible, in Proverbs 15 verse 18, we read, Losing your temper causes a lot of trouble, but staying calm settles arguments. And our last wise words from Nkosi Owl goes like this. Choosing peace is the wise thing to do. In all you say, let God's love shine through. Now, let us pray. Dear Father, I want to make good choices that pleases you. Please help me remember to ask others when I need to make big decisions. I know that I can always talk to you about anything. Thank you, Lord. Amen. That was the last Mellow story. Next time, it's a new adventure. And now, it's time for me, Auntie Mariana, to say goodbye for now. Until next time. These stories are read by Mariana Lawrence with permission from the book Mellow's Kingdom, written by Tuli Madonsela and co-authored by Wenzili, Kulikili and Zedekiah Mzimanga, with assistance from Sua Duplessis and published by Christian Art Publishers. The book is available at all leading bookstores. <music>